since there are people who may not be here, it's important that we push a little bit to extract all the information that we need to make informed decisions. So I'm going to push a little bit, Kim. You said everything that you've done has been the same. But this area, the time, all the different things that are happening in the economy here, it's different. So what's going to be different about you this time? Well, one, I, I think that everybody is excited and everybody's talking about Foxconn. So, so that would be one of the, the major uh, situations I, I'll work, work in. One of the things is said that Foxconn is going to have a whole lot of jobs. But in that district, transportation is a big issue. If Foxconn have the jobs, the people, getting the people to the jobs is going to be an issue. I drive Lyft in, at night, and I found out that it's a whole lot of uh, single parent mothers that they, they, they go to Amazon. It costs them about $16 for that trip. They have to stop at the babysitter. I don't know how much that costs, but we have to work out some type of program that can provide transportation to the people in that area because a whole lot of them don't have cars. Thank you. So we'll go forward to the next question. So what plan do you have to contribute to the betterment of that area that you're um, hoping to serve in? The, well, the plan is, is simple. One, one of the things is that uh, over in that area, uh, while I was in office, I worked very closely with the Racine Police Department and the Sheriff. Uh, one of the things that if you notice, if you, the crime rate in Racine is actually down. One of the reasons is that the Sheriff, not only the Racine Police Department give that area special attention, but the Sheriff also. You can come over in that area and you can find the Sheriff working with the Racine Police Department uh, constantly making sure that crime do not escalate in that area to the point it was at one time. Okay, so um, you said that crime has been reduced in that area. In addition to crime being reduced, I got to push a little bit because it's just me and you, right? <laughs> okay. I need a little bit of detail on the plan. In addition, okay, crime has been reduced. That's great. But then what's the next step? If it's already reduced there, then how are we going to make it even better? That's what, that's what I was saying when I first started, and one of the, the cornerstone of what I plan to do in the next two years is jobs, 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 and training, 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 and transportation, transportation. Those, those are key issues in trying to make sure that the area in town that where the lowest, un, uh, the highest unemployment where the uh, highest incarceration, I hate to keep repeating it, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. We have to work at that first. We got to bring the district up from the bottom and, and lift it up and, 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 and not uh, work at, at, at things that, you know, sounds good, looks good, you know. Those are important, how your community looks, but you got to work at the root cause of the problems in that area. So, with that being said, you're, you're, um, you've already answered the next question, which was what are your one or two issues that you'll be addressing should you be elected? And you've said that uh, it's jobs and training and transportation. Jobs, training, and transportation. Would you say those are your key areas based on what you just said? No, well, my, my key areas is uh, promoting job growth in the area supporting economic development and controlling taxes. Same, same, same as pretty much in every district. But what I'm trying to do, uh, working with the neighborhood and the community, is to bring more jobs to an area where it's been suggested that unemployment in, in, the, uh, in the fourth district amongst minorities are as high as 24 percent. That's an extremely high number in today's society where 
you know, we hear that since Trump been elected, unemployment amongst African Americans is at an all time low. That's not in the fourth district. That's not happening. Okay. So let us move forward. What strengths do you have that uh, would benefit your work in these areas? My my strengths are communicating with people. I think that's the that's the one thing that that anybody, whether you some people looked at as professional politicians or not. If you're able to com communicate, meet with people, find out what their needs is, and work towards helping uh, eliminate those things in their lives that have held them back, then you, 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 you're doing something for our community. Uh, you just can't sit back and, and go to meetings, go to meetings, vote on items, and not really get out here and talk to the people and find out what they need. So, do you, are you aware of any issues that you might have that would create a conflict of interest for you? No. <laughs> any relationships, any associations? I'm, I'm retired. I have to ask, I have to I'm ask. I'm retired. Okay. I have the time. I plan to put the time in. I'm be, I'm believed and unbeknown to some people that might be sitting in this off in this uh, room tonight. Uh, I'm I'm gonna do what I have done for the past twenty some years. When I was in business, I had a newspaper, and and I I, I was able to c communicate. I knew what the issues was. I I knew how to to connect people with people that could help people solve their own problems. And, 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 and I have just, I have to say that I just have more time that I can make available to people because of my retirement. So I'm going to get some questions from the community, but before I do, we've played all nicey-nicey, let's just jump to it. Racine is the fourth worst city for African Americans to live in, according to USA Today. So you've talked about job growth, and you've talked about supporting economic development, and all of that. That, how are, how are you going to specifically, give me two specific things that you will do to help change it, to help move us from number four? Two very specific things, not general ideas, two specific things. Well, one of the things that I, I plan to do is the fact that Boston <coughs> training. I mean, we don't want to send people out on jobs and they're not trained. And, and many of the people don't have the transportation to get to Gateway and uh, some of the institutions that will be training them. So I'm, I'm looking at the city and the county partner to bring some of the, 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 the uh, programming uh, to train people into the district. You know, we have the Flatiron Mall over there. We have the community, uh, uh, Martin Luther King Center, and and they not being used to their fully potential, what their potentials are. Uh, I was in the uh, in the Flatiron Mall, and they have vacant areas, vacant rooms. You know, you could create some program by working and partnering with the city and county and working together with that. Okay, perfect. So, I'm not going to ask you a question about opiates, even though I want to. Instead, I'm going to open it up to the community to ask, and hopefully, they may have some questions about it. So, if you have questions, pop your hand up, and it's first person with a question. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you have a question? Oh, okay. So, and then we have a question here. Okay, so this question is, there are programs for training our young people 18 to 24 years old, our young adults, but, but we know that many of our men and women have been in prison for years, coming out in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even beyond. Uh, what are we going to do for them? What is the county going to do in your district? Specifically, since you said you have high incarceration, high unemployment, how are you going to leverage the power that you have, should you be elected in the position that you're in, to help eliminate or reduce this issue? One of the things is that people, uh, especially people that 
that been incarcerated. I, I have a member of my family that uh, have been incarcerated. Uh, they, when they came back, I encouraged them to go to Gateway and, and be trained in uh, our area. Um, what I, I can't quite remember, but it's uh, working with machinery. Uh, CNC? Yeah, CNC. Mm -hmm. And he got a job in that. But, but I encouraged him not to stop there, go back and be trained. And now he's programming, and he's making $30 an hour. He's able to, to uh, take his kids uh, on, on, on field trips and vacation. And he have a, uh, went back to prison. He's been able to stay out of prison because people that in communities, we need to identify the people that need help. Uh, I would love to see a program like the Urban League come back. Uh, the Urban League was dismounted by the city, uh, by the mayor at that particular time. And, um, and that, that was a program that was very beneficial in getting people into the unions. And I, I like to give a plug. I was endorsed by the uh, local union uh, over my opponent. So I'd like, right. to, I'd like to give a plug for that. Well, since you were endorsed, and we've heard about the, su the success of one individual, you did say that we need to identify the individual. So here comes the push. She identified them in her question, 18 to 24 years old. So uh, you've talked about the contributions of the Urban League, but we're interested in your contribution. So do you know any way that you can help the, the, that? The, 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 one of the things is that I cannot create jobs. I have to work with people that create jobs. I cannot train people for jobs. I have to work with people to train people for jobs. That's the role I can play, bringing, bringing people together that can solve the problems. Uh, I think sometimes politicians think that they are problem solvers. I'm not a, I, I can't do that. I have to work with the, uh, I think bringing the city and the county together. I don't think it's enough of that. I think I think we need to reach out and bring the two parties together. You know, uh, we had a move at one particular time, intergovernmental uh, partnership, that have kind of uh, kind of died out of the way. Thank you. There was a question here, sir. Oh yeah. Um, I noticed you said that um, in your district, uh, you know, some of the uh, disparities are going on and you need to get to the root causes of that. And I just make it twofold, you can tie it in. If elected, you would be one of very few black uh, supervisors. And this area has been deemed the fourth worst area for blacks to live in. How do you plan on representing that question or that issue to the county board? Because so far, no politician has dealt with that. And now, simply because you would be representing the fourth district, the very fact that you being black means you're carrying more of a load than just your district when yeah. it comes to that question. You know, at, at, I always considered myself as a, I represent everybody in the district. But then, if, if, if you have a house and, 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 you're, and, and you have a, uh, your, your, look, your roof is leaking and it's leaking in your bathroom, you're not gonna go over here in the living room and try to fix up the living room. You're gonna go where the problem is first. Okay. And, and people sometimes say, well, you know, you just wanna help black folks. It, that's not true. Uh, I have a good relationship with Hispanics and whites. My, my, my number one priority is to, to bring the district up for everybody. You know, uh, not just blacks. And, and anybody that feel that way, 
I, I want, want to go on record that that's not true, you know. So, so what I would do is to, again, identify and, and try to bring people together. We have another question, and the question, before I ask, ask, ask the question, I would like to read you the definition of what a forensic audit is in case people don't know. A forensic audit is an examination and evaluation of a firm or an individual's financial information for the use of evidence in court. It's the examination of financial information by an individual or firm, firm for use in court as evidence, okay? Uh -huh. So the question is, would you support a forensic audit? Of the county? Yes, yeah. of the city. Oh. Well, yes or no? You, well, I would support one, okay. but but you you have to understand the county and the city of Racine, their finances are totally two different things, and and uh, I think we have people that aldermen's that that's in those districts. They the one should be asking for those uh, those records to be investigated or whatever you do to them. Uh, my concern, and, and I give a quick one, but I don't have a 30 seconds, is that I feel that a, uh, uh, the county jail need to be reviewed by an independent uh, group. I mean, we Can have you be had... specific? Uh, it needs to be reviewed? What needs to be reviewed? The officers? The, the, operation, the operation, the operation of it. Uh, I mean, okay. I have people that think that think I'm still their county supervisor that call me and talk about how how that, that county jail is a concern to them. I had one lady recently, we had a death there because uh, uh, no one responded to, to a person that was a diabetic. And it took the county seven days to, to make that public. You know, those two kinds of things from the inside, as a supervisor, I can ask those questions. You know, uh, asking them as an everyday citizen, unfortunately, you just... We have a follow-up from the community. Yes, sir. Oh, just actually, as for the Oldman, I didn't know you were separating them all. I got your link. That's okay. That's okay. That's for the Oldman, mostly. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, for the record, the Racine Labor Council endorsed and I'm with the United Auto Workers and the screener, and we endorse Melissa Caprillian Becker and Tracy Lara. Okay, thank you. So the next question is um, from the community. There are a lot of us. Can I can I comment on? Absolutely. Since he mentioned that, I was never invited. As if, as the same as you guys said, she wasn't invited. I wasn't invited. That was the Labor Council's responsibility, yeah. not the UAW. I'm just saying I wasn't invited. Okay. And we pretty much stopped it right there. I wasn't invited. Okay. So, we're moving forward. The next question is from the community. There are a lot of us ex-cons and released felons that find ourselves being turned away by many landlords because of our record. Can you help us with this? We don't want to resort, resort back into crime just because we need a decent way of life. So can you help with the issue with landlords turning away felons? That, that's more of a, and I'm not trying to dodge it, but that's more of a, a, a city concern. Uh, uh, but as a supervisor, I would support any landlord that w would take a chance, we we, they call it taking a chance with individuals. <coughs> I'm a property owner. I screen the people that, that I rent to. Uh, I, if, they, if they have had a record, I tend not to worry about that. Uh, uh, one of my tenants is an ex-felon, and, and, and I've given him a chance. I haven't had any problems, so it's pretty much up to the individual landlords. We just hope that they do what we might consider the right thing. Okay. Any other questions from the community? 
Are there any follow-ups about uh, felons or anything like that? Because you did say, uh, you know, in your area, there's a lot of issues with unemployment and that kind of thing, and with uh, crime and that kind of thing. So if there are no follow-ups, we'll press forward. All right. So, how are you going to, well, you, you explained that already. We'll, we'll move on. How would you promote two-way communication between the residents in your district? Well, I'll do the same as I did when I was on the county board before. We used to, at, at the Dr. Martin Luther King Center, we would uh, periodically hold forums. And uh, one of the things that I plan to do this time compared to last time is I'm going to make at least uh, uh, one day out of the month. I hope I can use other where I can uh, be a, make, make myself available at one of the community centers, one of the churches, uh, uh, some location that's centrally located in the district that uh, people can come and really if they have a question, a uh, concern, they can bring that to me and I can start working on it immediately. Okay. Okay, well, okay, well, we won't be asking any more questions. He'll give us closing remarks. We'll take a brief break and then we'll go to the next. My, my end of remarks is very simple. For 14 years I served that district, uh, had very few complaints about me. Uh, I, I want to return and finish the job that I started. Uh, I have an open door policy for myself. Uh, my phone uh, number, uh, my personal cell phone number is made available to people, plus my home number. And uh, if, you, if you look over the history of my 14 years, very few people complain about my, my working with them and working in the district. Uh, it's a majority minority district. I think I, uh, I can do some things over there that is innovative and different. I think I would like to bring the city and the county closer together. And those are my commitment. And when I make a commitment, now that I have more time since I retired, uh, I can spend more time in trying to do the things that we started out doing uh, 14 years ago. Thank you so much for your time and your comments. We're going to take a brief break and then we'll come back with the next round of candidates. Thank you.